Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. My goodness, Thanksgiving is almost here. And that means that the Christmas season is almost upon us, which means people are going to start shopping for gifts for loved ones and for ones that are more obligatory than love. And sometimes the hardest people to buy a Christmas gift for is a tabletop wargamer. Hello everyone, and welcome to Good Enough's Christmas Gift Guide. This video is actually going to be a bit difficult to make it effective because my target audience here are the folks that don't normally watch my channel. This video is for the friends and family of the people who normally watch my channel. So, if you're one of my regulars, first, thank you very much. And second, pass it on. Though you could still watch, get, get some ideas, maybe pass them on that way to your, um, your, your friends and family. But the goal here is to help them find what to get you. So this is a win-win for everybody. It sucks to be stressed out over what to get somebody for Christmas. I mean, how many of you have been in this situation? Christmas is coming up and your friend, your family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, takes you down to the hobby store and has you pick out your gift with them just to make sure you get exactly what you want. Or you give them a list of like two or three things at a single store and it takes all of the surprise and all of the excitement out of it knowing exactly what you're gonna get. Some of you may have friends and family who know you and know your hobby well enough to be able to pick out the gift on their own without consulting you first, but I imagine many people don't. So, the purpose of this video is to provide ideas that aren't just adding to the pile of shame. Or to avoid the come with me and get your gift scenario. These gift ideas will range in price from super cheap to super expensive. And you'll see what I mean when we get to some of them. And they'll range in size from tiny stocking stuffers to things you're going to almost need an 18-wheeler to deliver. Maybe not that big, but you'll see. So, in no particular order, but organized by category, here are some gift ideas for the wargamer in your life that isn't just more models. First, hobby supplies. I just thought... Supplies! Paintbrushes and brush sets. Every hobbyist uses brushes, lots of brushes. So why not get them something that they're certain to use? You could get a pack of cheap workhorse brushes, or maybe buy them that super nice Winsor Newton that they've always wanted, but they just couldn't justify spending so much money on a brush. A paintbrush or a paintbrush set makes a great stocking stuffer, and even the super expensive ones are around $20 a piece, whereas you can get a package of the, you know, the real workhorse brushes for $10 or so. And while we're talking about brushes, what about an airbrush? Has your gamer ever mentioned trying out airbrushing? If they've been painting for more than a couple years, I'll bet you they've thought about it. Maybe they've even started talking about it. It's a daunting step, and perhaps they just need a little push. My wife got me my first airbrush a few years ago because I kept talking about it. And after several months of staring at the thing in fear and trepidation, I finally tried it out. And there was a bit of a steep learning curve, but once I got it down, I now use it all the time. If it's in your budget, you could get them a complete bundle that comes with the airbrush, a compressor, a tank. You could buy all that stuff online in a single purchase and it will run you somewhere between $150-$300 depending on the quality and brand of the airbrush that you're getting. Like brushes, every gamer needs paints. Maybe this is a new brand that they want to try out but feel a little weird about buying colors they already have. Maybe they've been talking about a new paint kind, like trying Citadel Contrast or Army Paint or Speed Painter, and you can buy them a starting set to try it out. Another idea would be to go in with someone who is buying them a model kit, and you get all the paints they would need for that kit along with some brushes. It would become almost like a, an entirely new model bundle. Individual pots of paint can run you about four to eight dollars, depending on brand, but you can find bundles, usually from most paint companies, that will reduce that price to about three to five dollars per bottle. And if your gamer's been painting for a while, you're probably familiar with the sight of paint pots and bottles scattered all over the table or to tossed haphazardly in an old shoebox for storage. Get them a nice rack. If your wargamer has a dedicated painting space, a really good inexpensive gift is a paint rack. They usually run between about $15 and $30. You can buy them made of MDF, you can get them made out of plastic, and there's dozens of different styles. 
I would have never bought one for myself, even though I desperately needed one and I knew I needed one, but every time I had 30 bucks or so to spend on my hobby, I usually spent it on a new model that went into the pile of shame. But for my birthday one year, my wife bought me a very simple, clear plastic paint rack, and now it has made a world of difference. I can't imagine why I put that off for so long. It makes it so much easier to organize your paints, see what you need, see the different colors you have. It's fantastic. Now, another thing you can get your gamer, if they don't already have one, is a wet palette. If they don't have one, I'm sure they've heard of it, and maybe they've considered getting one. But, like me, whenever I had extra money, I always spent it on models. I mean, that pile of shame just doesn't appear on its own. Simple wet palette kits can be purchased from hobby stores or craft stores for relatively cheap. Depending on which one you get, size, brand, all that stuff, it'll usually cost you between $15 and $30. Now the last item in the supplies category is storage. Every gamer needs more storage. No matter what kind of space they have, whether it's a box, a room, or an entire floor, they need more. Trust me on this. Storage bags, carrying cases, display cases are a great gift that allows them to show off their hard work, organize their hobby space, and maybe it'll even clear some space on the floor for you to walk in a straight line without stepping on something. So for example, those stackable bins that lock to each other, they're 20 bucks for a pack of two online, and they're a great option for a basic but functional storage um, unit. The next step up are storage bags that have foam or magnetic trays. Companies like Battle Foam are the Cadillac of these carrying cases. They offer lots of different bag sizes and all kinds of custom cut trays to fit models for just about any game that is out there. Now, these are premium products and so they have premium prices. Battle Foam sells a bag called the Pack 720 It's their mid-sized bag, but it's big enough to carry an entire army worth of miniatures. It's 150 bucks for just the bag, but it is an incredibly sturdy, well-built bag. Now the foam trays that you put inside start at about $15 and go up depending on the size of the tray. But you can buy bundles that include the bag and enough foam trays to fill it of the kind of foam that has uh, pluckable squares so you can customize the shape yourself. And you can get the, the bag and the tray bundle for about $250. Okay, so there's supplies, let's take a look now at accessories. So, first, gaming mats. Ever since the first neoprene game mats hit the market, I think they changed the way that tabletop war games can be set up. And now the variety of gaming mats has absolutely exploded. If you can imagine a setting where you'd play a tabletop game, I guarantee there's a gaming mat for it already. If your gamer doesn't already have one, a great gift idea is get them a double-sided gaming mat. Find one that uh, has you know two fairly generic sides on it, like a cityscape on one side and a grassy meadow or kind of a, a rocky area on the other side. They'll be able to use it for pretty much any game. Science fiction, fantasy, historical, doesn't matter. One of those sides will be able to fit it somehow. Now, if your gamer already has a few, Get them one to add to their collection. Get something a little bit unusual, maybe a volcanic one, maybe a snowscape, maybe a desert. If they have a favorite army or a main army that they play, get them one that matches it so they can play on a home field. There are lots of companies that sell them, and you can usually expect to pay oh, between $80 and $100 for a six foot by four foot mat. Smaller mats obviously are going to be a bit cheaper. Now closely tied with the gaming mats, if your wargamer already has a couple of them and you don't think it's a good idea to get them another one, get them some terrain. Now this may be just me, but I think that good terrain, a good mat and good terrain, makes the game as much as a fully painted army does. There are plenty of companies out there that make really decent terrain out of MDF, out of resin, out of plastic, and increasingly more and more of these companies are selling this terrain pre-painted or pre-printed. So you don't have to worry about just adding another um, you know, item to the pile of shame. Now they will have to at least build it in some cases, especially with the MDF stuff. But Gale Force 9 has a product line called Battlefield in a Box, and it sells quality pre-painted resin terrain. I'd say given what you're getting, 
it's not that expensive. You can literally pull it out of the box, put it right on the table, and it looks great. It's solid. And they've got a very wide variety of different kinds of scenarios and landscapes that they make terrain for. So prices can vary widely depending on the material, the size of the terrain, whether or not it's pre-painted. Uh, if you have a bit more of a budget, you can get them more pieces or bigger or nicer pieces, but here's an idea. Go in together with a bunch of other people and get your Wargamer a mat with a set of matching terrain. Get them an entirely new battlefield for Christmas. Frontline Gaming sells terrain bundles for between two and three hundred dollars. The mats run an additional eighty dollars, so I mean that can be pretty pricey. You're looking at between three and four hundred bucks. But like I said, if you have the budget for it, or if you have a bunch of people that can come together in on it, that might uh, you know knock down the the, uh, the financial burden a bit there. And I guarantee you, there are very few war gamers that wouldn't be absolutely ecstatic to have their very own battlefield that they can set up and play on. Now, of course, in order to use a mat in order to use terrain, they need somewhere to set all that stuff up. So now, let's talk about a gaming table. If your Wargamer has a dedicated gaming space, they definitely need a gaming table. Otherwise, they're playing on your dining room table or they set up a card table or something like that. But if they have the space for it, get them a dedicated game table. Now these game tables, these are the expensive items I was talking about before. They can vary between a couple hundred dollars to thousands, depending on quality and features. So for example, those six foot folding tables you see at Sam's Club or on Amazon or something like that, they're 60 bucks a piece. They're a bit too narrow to use alone, so you'll have to get two of them side by side, but that will provide you a lot of extra room uh, once you set up the mat and the terrain, you'll have some extra space on the table to put dice or cards or casualties or whatever. But that's a fairly cheap option, $120 for two tables that can be collapsed and put up whenever you need to. But you can also find custom gaming tables and some of these things will knock your socks off. These tables are often sold not as hobby supplies or, or you know, hobby tables, they're sold as pieces of furniture because they can double as dining room tables complete with matching chairs. They're beautifully made, usually out of various uh, kinds of wood, and they offer a huge variety of accessories. Some even include the colored lighting that you see in a PC gaming rig. Now, I mean, some of these are like the Rolls Royce of gaming tables. I did a quick Google search, and the cheapest of these super high quality game tables I found was $1,000 while the most expensive one I found, brace yourself, $10,000 for the base model. Now this isn't a custom one that you, uh, you know, find a carpenter and, and pay them. Those ones can probably go even north of 10 or 15,000. But this is a company that makes gaming tables and their base model is $10,000. So let's come back down to earth now and talk a little bit about dice because I don't imagine too many of you have $10,000 to spend uh, on your Wargamer. But if you do, I mean, more power to you. So let's talk about, again, some other things that might be a little more feasible. Let's talk about dice. If your gamer ever tells you they don't need any more dice, they probably also say that to themselves every morning in the mirror as a form of self-delusion. Gamers love dice. And they're a great way to get your gamer something that can be as personal as it is functional. For $15, you can get a nice Chess X dice set that matches the color scheme of their favorite army. For around $35, you can get them a dice set from something like Baron of Dice or some seller on Etsy that will either have a matching color scheme, but maybe it has some cool designs on the dice that match your player's army. You could also get them a joke set like this one here. Every gamer can appreciate a dice set like that, I guarantee you. Just don't roll them around the kids. Okay, well, while we're on the subject of dice, what about dice bags, dice trays? Those make great inexpensive gifts. A basic dice tray will run you about $10. But you could also have a custom-made leather one that could be personalized or imprinted with something to make that tray really theirs. Those will run you about $20 to $30. Uh, dice bags are also a great way to give a gift that's customized, personal, and super-duper functional. If they've got a lot of dice, get them one of these bad boys. 
Okay, so we've done supplies, we've done accessories. The last category, merchandise, clothing. If you can wear it, chances are you can buy one that has something printed on it for your gamer. Some of them are officially licensed, but you could also go to sites like Etsy or to a local uh, you know, clothing producer, a local printer, and they can make a custom shirt for you. You could also look for like knickknacks for the nooks and crannies that you can fill with mugs, keychains, figurines, other odds and ends. There's got to be lots of stuff available to get them that are branded, licensed, or even made to look like their favorite war game, their favorite miniature, their favorite model, their favorite army, whatever it is. And then last of all is art. You can't go wrong here, really, you can't. War gamers love hobby art. They'll stare at their rule books just to see the awesome art that's inside. And with art ranging from small pieces that could fit on an end table to massive canvas pieces that would make a museum jealous, there's got to be something you can find to decorate your war gamer's room, office, hobby space, bedroom, anything. So, that's it. Hopefully that gives you some ideas to be excited about. You can keep it a surprise, and it will still be happily received by the person you give them to. I would say that every single item on this list is definitely good enough.